just in case you missed it. Always plenty of cops down here at Power Market Street for a protest. Right to get overtime. Little bastards. I saw a couple of my favorite women beaters down here. Right? They're all probably, I'd say about 6 out of 10 got some domestic violence issues. Anyway, we're going to go back to the protest. I'm really sorry, but uh, nature calls. Anyway, we're back. I'm really sorry. Nature called. Got about 100, maybe 150 people down here at Palom Market Street. Protesting no new wars on Syria or Iraq. You know, as usual, the U.S. mortar machine is always in full action, killing innocent civilians on a daily basis. This is our government here in the United States. Hey, well, I keep boring you with speakers. I think it seems like I've been out here for many, many years, and shit never changes. Oh yeah, he's a creep. Is to realize that in a lot of ways the face of the anti-war movement has changed. The anti-war movement is part of the green movement. The anti-war movement is part oh, yeah, thank of you, Bear. the drone, thank you guys. drone movement. It is part of the struggle against militarization in our cities across the country. It is part of the struggle um, that's going on in between Israel and Palestine. And I know that many of you were involved in all of those struggles, and we have to constantly make anti-war um, a forefront or something that comes to the fore of all of those struggles. The anti-war movement is not an isolated movement. We are embedded, remember that word? We are embedded in all of the other struggles. And we have to make sure that that voice is heard, and we also have to make sure that when we're working with these organizations that we respect the thrust of those organizations. Um, if you've not been involved in things before, there are a lot of organizations here today. You can get involved in what they're doing. Code Pink has a website, codepink.org. You can look for the local chapters. There are several local chapters in the East Bay. Um, join in our actions on October 3rd. We're going to have a, an action in San Francisco against drones in solidarity with the um, National Day um, of Action Against Drones on October 12th. We are going to um, show up at Fleet Week. You're welcome to join us because Fleet Week is the militarization of everything. And it's the glamorization of um, military and so on. So please, if you're not involved, get involved. And if you're involved in other organizations, make sure that the anti-war message is loud and clear in whatever you do. Thank you, and glad to see you all today. Thank you so much, Eleanor, again. All right, so we're going to leave this chair. One, two, three, four. We don't want your racist war. Five, six, seven, eight. Stop the killing. Stop the hate. You ready? One, two, three, four. We don't want your racist war. Five, six, seven, eight. Stop the killing. Stop the hate. One, two, three, four. We don't want your racist war. Five, six, seven, eight. Stop the killing. Stop the hate. One, two, three, four. We don't want your racist
had this big demonstration in New York for climate, to promote climate, protection of the climate and the earth. And the very next day, we're out bombing a country, making war. And they, it seems like they're not connected, but they really are. Because if there's a money going for war, 70% of our taxes for bombs and killing people, that means, hey, there isn't that much money to spend on energy, different, different energy sources. So they, those two things are really connected, and I, I just thought I'd mention that because it's something for activists to think about. Anyway, uh, this coming Friday at 6 o'clock at the Unitarian Church, we're going to have two wonderful people who have been living in the Middle East talk about the situation there. They are working with the people. Kathy Kelly, a voice for creative nonviolence, will be there. She lived in, the, in Afghanistan for about 10 years and talked to many people in the Middle East. The other person who's going to talk about their situation, what they think the situation is really, uh, the, what's really going on there is Professor Stephen Zunis. He's an American international relations scholar, especially in Middle Eastern politics. He will be the other speaker there. So it's at, the, at 6 o'clock at the First Unitarian Universal Society on the corner of Franklin and Gary Boulevard, not too far from here. So I hope you all come and hear some experts give their opinions about this. People who have really lived in the Middle East. Not just making money off of the weapons and, and all the murder that's going on over there. So thank you very much. Hope to see you then.
Salvador. My people there have suffered war, unnecessary war. It's a necessary killing anywhere, anywhere. And who is the responsible there? United States. Yeah. We have to make them responsible. And to make them responsible, they have to feel the pressure of the people. You, my brother, you, my sister. The pressure is necessary and is effective. It's not Congress. It's not the President. It's not the Vice President. It's not the Army. It's the people. But we have to, to be organized. Organize and fight back with all our might. We cannot afford to be losing people everywhere. Everywhere they want, they can choose and pick who they're going to kill. What people, what ethnicity doesn't matter. If there is coal, if there is oil, if there is whatever that is, that the people in the United States the big, the, the big wings in the United States, if they are going to make money out of that invasion, out of, out of that occupation, out of that killing, then we go to it no matter what. The money that is a penny in any war, in any invasion, should be spent in social services in this country. Yeah, right. Uh, United States owes a lot of money to China. How United States is going to pay it? It's not going to be the Bay Wings. It's not going to be Obama. We are going to pay it. We are going to pay it. We are, they are going to be sticking their hands in our pockets with more taxes, more of these, more for Social Security, more money for Medicare, more money for the whatever service we have now, we're not going to have it anymore. Little by little, they're going to be taking more and more and more cutting down, cutting down the social services, education, housing. You see in San Francisco, nobody can live here anymore. Nobody with a little uh, salary, more salary can live anywhere in San Francisco. Why? Because the big ones, the guys who have the money, they are buying everything. And they are the ones, they are the responsible for all the misery that is going on all over the world. And that is the hate they have against Cuba. And that is the hate they go against Venezuela, and Ecuador, and Bolivia, and Argentina, and Brazil, and El Salvador, and Nicaragua. We have to be, to come together. We have to fight. We have to organize. And you, my brother, you, my sister, believe in yourself. There is power in every one of us. It's necessary. It's critical. It's absolutely possible as well that we prevent this government to continue going freely killing people all over the world for profit. I heard that somebody speaking at um, KPFA, and he was saying, when we say no justice, no peace, he said, we should be saying no justice, no profit. And I, I like that very much. Because we are making the profit, and they, the big ways are enjoying the profit. And what do we have? Peanuts. Yeah, that's right. That is, we are lucky. So brothers and sisters, come together. Invite your, your relatives, your family, to all of them, your, um, your neighbors, your friends, everybody. Let's come together. Pay attention to when there is a call for emergency demonstrations. Come together, come together, and fight back together. Together we are we have, we are the force. Yeah, that's right. Woo! So stop the killing! Yeah. Stop, stop the killing! Stop, stop the killing! You want NATO? Hands off Syria! 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 Do we want money for jobs and education? Yeah! Wait, I can't hear you. Do we want money for jobs and education? Yes. Not for war and occupation? That's right.
And that's why I'm glad to see you all here with me today. It's encouraging to see so many Americans refusing to buy into the BS corporate media narrative that has been fed to us so many times before. But today is only the beginning, friends. To break this cycle of violence, we need to keep getting out there, telling the war profiteers, the oil companies, all the corporations that are perverting our nation's policies to the causes of war and hatred, profiting nobody but themselves and costing innocent life every single day, that we see them. We know they bought our government, and we aren't going to waste our time anymore lobbying politicians who, with just a few exceptions, understand only the language of money, of campaign contributions, and political donations. Clearly, we can no longer rely on this system to keep these sociopathic warmongers un under control. It's up to us, my friends. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Again, brothers and sisters, we hope you get involved as you're walking by. Find out more about the organizations participating. Sign up in the table in the back. This won't end today. It can't end today. We have to be realistic about the power, the strength, and determination of these people who make money off of this war. We must be honest about how these people are willing to kill millions in order to preserve their wealth, their power, for decades and decades. So if we are facing and we are honest about the seriousness of this group, of these people, of these corporations, then we ourselves must be honest and serious about what we have to do. We have to sign up, we have to join, we have to reach out to our communities the way we did today. The reason we have these rallies, the reason why we come here it's because it is the economic center of San Francisco. Thousands of people walk through here. Thousands of people have walked just this past hour that we've been here listening to this message with the hope that they will question, with the hope that they won't just allow this government to spend millions and millions of dollars to kill innocent people who they actually have more relation to than the millionaires in Congress, than the millionaires in the Senate, millionaires all over the world who govern the rules to make war. So brothers and sisters, as we wrap up this rally, I ask you if you can come in a little bit closer. What we want to do is have a big chant, make sure as the media is around to take a photo, which is going to lead a chant, and we want it to be strong so that we, when we leave, we know that we're leaving, knowing that tomorrow we have to continue fighting, we have to continue protesting, we have to continue organizing. So we're going to say, U.S. NATO, hands off Syria! 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 There you have it, folks. We're down here at Powell Market with AnswerSF.org. It's your live streamer, Freeman Sullivan. So we're getting ready to wind this protest up. Down here at Powell Market. Those of you who joined us late, it's a protest against the new war that's going on in Syria and Iraq. And this demonstration was sponsored by AnswerSF.org. So go to that website for more information about this protest and about all other protests. Hey, uh, getting back into live streaming sort of thing. So uh, I should be back here in another few more days, so keep apprised. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, Freeman Sullivan, F-R-E-E-M-A-N-S-U-L-L-I-V-A-N, or Clark.Sullivan on Facebook if you want to know what it's all about. Anyway, much love, much peace to all you people that are watching. I'll be back really soon. Love you all.